Uh, please stand for the call to worship. Place your trust in God. God's faithfulness is unshakable. May our worship this day strengthen our faith. May our faithfulness be unshakable. May our words and actions be good and true. May we grow in godliness each and every day. Our hymn of praise is number seven. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. children of God. That's true everywhere, but especially here at the table. Sometimes we get it into our heads that our job is to act like a gatekeeper, to only allow the right type of person in. Our job is actually more like throwing the doors open wide and calling anyone who will come in. It's the Lord's table, not our own. Amen. Let us pray. God, whose love is deep and true for all people, we know that we only share a fraction of that love with our world. Help us to grow in that love so that we welcome all as you have welcomed all of us. We thank you for the example of Jesus who showed us how to love the outcast, the forgotten, and even the enemy. We thank you for this bread and cup, the symbols that remind us of how much that love costs you. As we take the bread and cup, fill us again with your spirit that we can grow in your love. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and after he gave thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me, the body of Christ, broken for you and me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me, the blood of Christ, shed for you and me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's life, death, and resurrection until he comes. This is not my table. This is not the church's table. This is God's table and all, all are welcome to come home. All are welcome to come forth and partake. Let us feast. All right, my friends. Here we go. Well, you got to turn it on. All right. Here we go. We are reaching. We are reaching for God. God is reaching for us. We are reaching out to each other and we are reaching out to our community and we remember that this is an acronym r is for say the word with me relevance e is for excellence a is for accessibility c is for capacity and h is for holistic which is what we're going to begin discussing today 
So what do you think? Holistic. What do you think about when you hear that word holistic? Holistic living. Uh, do you think of people who do yoga? Do you think of people who only who are vegan, they only eat grass? <laughs> Or maybe you think of a different approach of treating pain and sickness, such as going to a chiropractor or even it's going as far as refusing Western medicine. So here is a definition of holistic. It is encompassing the whole of a thing, not just a part. Which reminds me of you know, you've heard this, the whole is bigger than the sum of its parts. Or, or you know, you, we see the forest, not just the trees, okay? We see the, the whole. Now, you may be thinking, you know, that word, well, that word holistic, I didn't add my animations. You're going to have to kind of read through this stuff, all right? The word holistic, it looks like, like a hole, or like a hole in the ground. But actually, it goes back to the Greek Holos, which means whole. And this, this idea of being holistic, this is a new concept in a way. Uh, it was coined by this man right here, Jan Christian Smuts, who was a soldier, a scholar, and philosopher from South Africa. He describes holism as the tendency of nature to form holes of organisms and systems from the ordered groupings of single units, alias molecules, atoms, and subatomic particles. Which, I don't know about you, that sounds like God, who we know loves the community of creation and creates us to thrive in relationship within the system of community. And so once again, our scripture Lectionary scripture of James 2, 1 through 10 lines up with our word of the with our word of the week. Because like we talked about during communion and the children's moment, God has placed us in a system or a church where though we come from different walks of life, God joins us together into a unified, diverse, holistic system where no one is discarded. And tossed to the side. We're still going, y'all. There you go. And once again, it to me it's wild that I'm talking to you about the word holistic after I have returned from a well-being retreat for ministers in Washington D.C. because uh, that's another way of thinking about holistic: the different aspects of what makes us us. We have physical, we have physical, emotional, mental, intellectual, social, and spiritual, and they are all equally important when it comes to the well-being of each of us, which we have all been created in the very image of God. So let's talk about each one of these. Let's talk about these different parts of our well-being. One is physical. That is the flesh and bone part of our being. That's the part that allows us to move through the space and, and interact with the environment, with our senses. And then we have the mental. This is the part that we think with. This is what allows us to take in information and then process it and then make rational choices about what to do with it. We have intellectual. This is the part that makes us creative and curious and critical thinkers when our brains are stimulated. We have emotional. This is the part that helps us be aware of our feelings. We talked about this. And then we regulate and even express, this is what I am feeling. That's our emotional part of our well-being. Social. This is the part that allows us to interact with other people and form positive, healthy relationships. And that's where that was really talked about at this retreat that I attended. That lone, we have an epidemic of loneliness. And you know, since since the pandemic and 
and we're just doing life different with Zoom and this and that, and people are lonely, and it affects, it affects our health. And then, my friends, we have spiritual. This is the part that gives our lives meaning and purpose and helps us connect to something greater than ourselves. And then I've seen other, um, other uh, readings about this. They include financial. Poverty is the fourth leading killer in our country. 400,000 people die from poverty because it affects our health. You, you don't have access to, to things in our environment. That's another thing. There are so many people that are living in a bad environment that affects their health and their overall well-being. So, again, the spiritual. This is the part that gives our lives meaning and purpose and help us connect to something greater than ourselves, which we believe is our holistic God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, who created us to be holistic beings. And just like these three parts of our God are equally important and dependent upon each other, so are the parts of our being. This is discussed. I don't know if you know this. But being a minister can be as stressful and traumatic as being a soldier, my friends. Because we see and deal with a lot. Not me, of course. Because you're perfect, you know that, right? You know what I'm talking about. And it can be very isolating. So our pension fund not only works on us having financial stability when we retire, but also that we might live to see it and enjoy it for many years. So they have programs that help us be more healthy as a whole person and more effective as a pastor. But here's the deal. In our restoration tradition, we believe in the priesthood of all believers. We, as disciples of Christ, are all out there being prophetic. We are all revealing Christ to a certain people in a certain place and in and, and a certain time through our excellent ministry. And we are constantly trying to build our capacity, you know, get rid of the things that are weighing us down so that we have the capacity to do good. And this is stressful. And it can do a toll on your well-being, which is not God's will. So let us remember the greatest commandment. This is our scripture, Mark 12, 29-31. And the scripture reads, the most important one answered Jesus is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than this. Here's one of those names that you can find. And notice that it has like the important things in red. We want you to love the Lord, your God, love your neighbor. And I'm going to make a correction because it lets something out. We love ourselves, all right? That God commands us, love your neighbor as yourself. God commands us to love our holistic selves. But somehow we skip right over that. Somehow we got it in our minds that our worth is only in our doing instead of in our being. God does not call us to sacrifice our well-being. God calls us to thrive and to help each other thrive. Because it is next to impossible to draw a cup of living water from a well that is dry. And it is hard to share the living bread with emaciated hands. I want you to reflect upon this. I want you to, I want you to stimulate your intellectual and your spiritual parts of your well-being and by reflecting on scripture with me, write this down. Mark 2, 
1 through 12, my friends, and I'm going to text it to you. I'm going to email it to you. I may call it. All right, I'll know. Mark 2, 1 through 12. This is the scripture about the man that gets lowered through the roof. To his friends lower him through the roof so that he might get to Jesus. I would like for you to read that, please. So that we can talk about how Jesus ministers to our holistic needs. And I want you to start paying attention to what part of your holistic being is hurting. And why? Because why, why do we need to do this? Because God commands us to love ourselves. And, and why is that? Because God declared that we are good. Amen.